you know. You know. <laughs> 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 that's funny. <laughs> no one's gonna understand why that's funny. That's funny. I, yeah, I have this horrible wow. habit of since my camera is the one that does the fade in. Mm -hmm. It's like I always feel like I need to start. Like it's I'm in the middle of a cohesive thought, mm -hmm. and uh, I just am like, you know, you know, you know, with the weather, <laughs> you know. And also, I'm sure that it we notice it because i've done it i've had to do it like three times in a row yeah today so, wait it's an yeah that's true so <laughs> base, uh, i mean we, we've just been you know record something went wrong record something went wrong you know that's all yeah that's, that's all that's all that's all um but right now we, we're I'm, i we're crunching down because we got to prepare for some episodes because i'm going to the philippines Woo! next week i think i mentioned this in the podcast right I, yeah yeah i yeah. think so right cousins rich friend or spit that's gross cousins rich friend yeah invited us out to feel yes and that's gonna be next week which is really surreal um i don't even know how to comprehend the fact that that's happening yet um other than the fact that we're now beginning to like kind of pack our things and stuff and i'm like oh are we really gonna go overseas for the first time so that's really cool fun. yeah but i don't know anything about the philippines like anything at all well, now, now I think is the perfect time to just go and do a bunch of research and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Welcome to the podcast. We are supposed to do it. Yeah, I know. But you didn't do it. You took... Like... That's true. That's true. But we're, 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 we were vibing. The vibes were immaculate. So the vibes had... What's good, everybody? Welcome to 97. Uh, this is episode on Education Station podcast. I'm Zach. I'm here with Arthur. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. I'd like That's to so thank funny. our sponsor, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> this video is sponsored <laughs> by Fire. <laughs> Have you ever been cold? Try Fire. Try fire. <laughs> this episode has been sponsored by the Periodic Table. <laughs> Avatar, the last airbender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, but I, we, we've been... I, I, I have this notebook here, Zach. Do you know what this is, Zach? Handy dandy notebook. Handy dandy notebook. Do you know what's in here, Zach? words <laughs> god damn it it is a to-do list before the philippines or in philippines no in general oh like a daily daily to-do list so i mentioned before that i've been writing things down why i've been gotten into like i'm a tech guy but i've been getting really into writing things down is this this is this for some millennial gen z like uh like vintage old is new type thing where i'm saying screw the culture i love writ like physical rather than digital no you're just jotting notes being uh, a note guy i'm a 23 year old man walking around with a walkman no i would never do that, that. would be kind of cool actually with like the old school like the little tiny over your headphones i those are cool but to a certain point it would become a hassle. Like, just, you know, just in general. I mean, they do kind of sound like shit, but... Well, I don't know. I mean, you slap... I, it's been a while since so I listened to a cassette. <laughs> <laughs> well, a cassette would be fine, but I guess it would be the quality of the headphones that you yeah, use. Yeah, that's, that's more so what I was thinking. Right, like, right, right. you know, cassette is pretty fucking solid. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a... Well, it's a Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be analog anyways, so. Right. Anal sound, science, things, you know, it, it's fine. But anyways. anyways. Oh, Jinx, you owe me a blowjob. So I have this <laughs> to-do list that I've, I've been writing things down, right? <laughs> and I've been doing it for a while. Let me see. I, well, not like a while, while, but a decent amount of time. Let's see. The first thing uh, was 10. What is 10? Month. October. October. Yes. Um, I mean, there's been some times where I've forgotten and then right time skip and then i and go and then i go to present day whenever that is and then here's another time skip you know and uh, so i've been kind of slacking but basically all that's written here is just what i I've, I've been i've been doing my best to do it as much as possible like there's time scripts and everything but um there's at least two to three weeks of those uh, uh of actual me planning things out um so i've been writing it down because i've been enjoying writing things down. i have another notebook over there just for miscellaneous writing things down. Like, uh, I have just, like, some Genshin stuff written down, uh, some uh, other random notes just written down. And I've been enjoying writing things down because I, I've tried this whole organization thing, like, uh, doing, uh, like, I have a calendar, like, a whiteboard calendar, and, and, then, and then I have the, like, 
apps and stuff. You know, Apple's. You know, before it would be Google's, Apple's, um, uh, Tick Tick. I think is another one that's pretty good. Um, it's also free and it's nice to use. But whenever I do it on my phone, it just doesn't work. Yeah, for me, I I'm the same way. Honestly, like if I have something written down on my phone, if I don't get like a notification to remind me about said thing, I'm totally a hundred percent gonna forget. Yeah, well, well, with Tick Tick at least, and I think reminders as well. I think it depends how you said it, but with Tick Tick. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. It wouldn't be called TikTok because that'd be confusing. Um, but I think it's, or it's just probably called Tick. Tick. Maybe it's just called Tick. Maybe just one. I don't know. And then I'm confusing TikTok with Tick. So I'm saying, I want to say Tick Tick, but it's not. I, it might just be Tick. Talk Tick. Okay. <laughs> it's probably. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it would just do a daily, like, it, uh, like 9 a.m. I think it is. It'll just pop up as a notification and then what i would do is just never clear it right oh yeah yeah okay right right sense. um but it still doesn't work like i don't I, and by that i mean the motivation wise like sometimes i'll just say ah, i'll just do it whenever i can or do it tomorrow or whatever when i write it down though some kind of priority thing hits in my mind i don't know maybe it's because i'm physically writing it down and i'm putting in the effort but i don't know i it's it's really effortless to just go okay i'm going to do this today and this do this tomorrow cool and then i put my and then or and then i close that and then i go back on twitter right yeah but with this i take the take it out undo the little thing look for where i am today and then oh i'm gonna write it down so what i it, it and it, it's nice honestly i for the longest time, for as long as I've known you, I love the way that you take notes. Like, it is... What do you mean? I mean, like, the... Uh, I remember when we were like younger... Like how I take notes? Yeah. And do I take notes differently than others? Well, <laughs> I mean... I doodle a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly why. Because I, I remember when we were younger, um, you, like, all over your notebooks would just be a bunch of doodles and stuff. Yeah, it helps me learn, or it helps me just retain things better. Like, I have, I, I, it's very visual, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, I imagine, basically, my notebooks, I mean, they, you kind of, they kind of reflect it. There's, like, arrows pointing everywhere, and not necessarily doodles, but kind of, like, uh, like, maybe, like, little, I guess, manga speed lines or whatever, and important things, and stars and stuff, and hearts and stuff, which sounds kind of really corny, but I, the more, I, the more I put into it, the more I remember that certain detail. Yeah. Um, which helped me like in college <laughs> lol um i would always i would still do that type of note taking style like i had my ipad but i would still write notes um mm -hmm. well i mean i was trying the whole ipad thing so I, that's that's not that's not true but um i also doodle here and there like i would doodle anime things or whatever that pertain to the notes the problem with that is even if it's a doodle or a sketch it takes like a little it takes a bit you know of time to do mm -hmm at least a couple of sec like a handful at least 30 or so seconds 30 45 maybe even a minute mm -hmm. and if you ever took a, took a notes in a university class zach it's fast it's fast <laughs> fast as fuck fast boy. As fuck. you don't have that time <laughs> <laughs> so that it, it's kind of rough but uh, we, uh I, I just how it works for me and then at some point i just decided i'm just not gonna take notes anymore because i began to believe in the whole notion of um absorbing and retaining over just writing it down and hoping for memorization mm -hmm. anyways that's besides the point um now you're writing stuff down again i'm writing stuff down again but so this is how the way i do the whole thing because i the way i you how do you think of someone like an organ imagine an organized person mm -hmm. not me or maybe not even you just imagine a, a just a stereotypical person who is organized what do they do they probably have a planner oh yeah yeah and they have they have highlighter highlighter right yeah and they have the things they're going to do for the day in order with time slots of how long they should you know I'm going to wake up from eight I'm wake up and do all my things from eight a.m. to eight or to eight a.m. to nine o'clock by nine or let's say I wake up at seven and by seven thirty I should have finished brushing my teeth and showered or something like that by seven by eight I'm eating breakfast. From eight to nine, I'm working out, and if, you know this, that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a bit overkill for me because I am naturally not an organ. Like I would never have thought if you told me one year ago, no, yeah, one year ago, literally, just past Nuki at, at any point, past Nuki, that he would be that you that okay, listen, 
young Nuki, you're going at some point in your life, you're going to work on a schedule and you're going to write things down. I'd be like, you're just fuck you. Who are you? You know? Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. But, <laughs> but I just don't, it's just not how I roll. I just, I'm, I'm with the flow type of thing. The problem is when you start to, to get into certain things such as, let's say a deadline that I have, I have to finish everything I need to do before I leave for the Philippines in a week, <laughs> you start to think about, okay, how can I op- min max everything, all, all these tasks I have to do, like these COD edits, um, uneducated station, the podcast, um, other things that I want to do. So, right. you know, things like that. So you just have to, however, that highlighter time frame thing does not, does not compute in my brain. I've tried it before. Does not compute. It works, but I get burnt out way too quick, and then I lose it yeah. immediately. So, I mean, it it's kind of hard because you have that that regimented thing, but also, I think a lot of it too has to do with the fact that, like, I'm sure you as well as I feel this way, where it's just like I can't be fucking bothered. Yes, I procrastinate a lot, and because of my procrastination. It my life has been really bad. <laughs> trying trying to finish these edits and stuff. But so what I'm getting at is the way I do notes now, or well, I guess notes, I guess. But the way I'm doing my my notebook schedule, like this is a really small. It's the size of my palm, right? Right. I don't have space to do all of that. Mm-hmm. So what that's done is it's forced me to do note taking or uh, scheduling in a way where it's just the basics. Yeah. It's this is what I need to do for the day. Mm-hmm. Maybe in order. Um, and maybe there's a time slot, like for streams, there's a time slot because yeah. that's I want that to be in some sort of schedule. But then I base basically what I would do is I, I it's bu- just standard bullet points. Oh yeah, you know bullet point a dash maybe an arrow. Um, I do a lot of arrows. I like arrows a lot in my notes. But um, and a star. The star would mean like the important task and everything else go or goes around it. What I'm trying to get at is there it isn't it isn't no highlighter organized chronological time slot type thing. It's just, this is what I have to do for the day, and these are my goals that I have to do for the day, and I need to accomplish them these days. Whether At what time, at what point, I don't know, but this is just what needs to happen. And that's it. No more than that. No, no more complicated than that. No more dumber than that. I think that that's the way to, to do it, though, especially for someone who's chaotic, or whose life is as chaotic mm-hmm. as yours is. Um, and I mean, same thing for me too. I really should just carry around a little handy dandy notebook and just jot stuff down. It's nice. I just went to Fred Myers and was like, this is a cute notebook. And I grabbed it and then I was like, I should use it for something. And I use it for this. So I just skipped, I don't have a pencil on me right now. I think it left over there, but I have a pencil on it. And then depending on where I am, I leave it on my room or on the, on the, here, my setup. So what I do, what I do is I, every Sunday I write out what I'm going to do for the, for the week. Mm. from monday to, to sunday right that's that's what i've been doing and usually usually i won't plan for the the, the week proceeding like two weeks ahead because mm-hmm. that's too much again that goes into overkill um so or two or i, I guess overkill yeah the, the 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 threshold it breaks the threshold into uh too complicated mm-hmm. right because then that's a bit much the basics. The basics is all I personally need to do. So that's what I do. And I recommend this to anybody who also lives my lifestyle of I don't get a lot of shit done. Or I do get a lot of shit done, but it's really sporadic. I When I was in Red, Red Reserve, um, back in Call of Duty days, um, I did work on a schedule. Because it was, I mean, I was working for a corporation, so I have to finish you know, projects within deadlines and stuff, right? Right, yeah. You know, yeah. so uh, I, I, that was when I first got this whiteboard over there that you can't you can't see on camera, but it's over there. And I was writing shit down and I had everything, like I finished half my syncing here and then I finished my sync here. I started doing cinematics here. It was perfect. And I honestly, I actually enjoyed it to us an extent. Like it was actually kind of a lot of fun because it felt like a game almost. Um, and, and as as soon as you can gamify something, it's a lot easier. It's so much fun when you're able to kind of make it feel like you're doing side quests and yes, all of that exactly. kind of stuff. I'm a side quest type of guy. I fuck main quest. I hate main quest. Dude, it's so funny. Um, I I just imagine like life life is basically an MMO. Mm-hmm. It is. You're you're just running around 
developing skills and trying not to die. <laughs> <laughs> Except there's no respawn points, Zach. And, yeah, I know. And no, and no fast travel. Darn. Or <laughs> no teleport points. <laughs> yeah, there. Yet. 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 Yeah, I, I think. Uh, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I just imagined like the types of people who fit into the different subcategories of people who play video games, like the Leroy Jenkins type, you know. As in, like, monkey brain Call of Duty? No, 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 no. Like the, do you remember the meme of the Leroy, Leroy Jenkins. Jenkins? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, okay. Just making sure. Um, You know, just, like, going in, balls to the wall, just, like, full sending life, basically. Oh, right, right. Those are the people who are, like, out skydiving and mm-hmm. mountaineering and all of that crazy shit. I do want to go skydiving, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's random side tangent. Anyways, and then there's like, you know, you could you could make an example out of like any type of style of gamer, and gamer. then gamers, and then you can you can apply it to like the different ways that people live. Mm-hmm. Gamers. Gamers. Gaming. <laughs> it is nice uh, to, to, to kind of gamify life as much as possible. Yeah. Well, it makes it easier, right? So it's much. It's less of a task, more of a quest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when it's... you have a quest, <laughs> and when you have a when you when you have that quest list, and it's a stack, and you're like, "Fuck, I got to get through them." Yeah. You got to get through them. Got to get through your dailies. Got to get through the dailies. Exactly. <laughs> this is my dailies. That, except it's not repetitive. Well, well okay. I guess we're, my da- my dailies, my quote unquote dailies is the ritual that I need to, to create, right. which I have been creating. I mentioned I got into cough or I've gotten into tea, right? Yeah. I've been making bacha and it's been cool. Um, oh, I mentioned I wanted to talk about it, but then we didn't get to it because we started talking about like middle school and shit because that was fun last episode. But um, that episode was so much fun. That was one of my favorite episodes, honestly. <laughs> it's always good to reminisce on the past. But now let's talk about the present. I've been trying to be more competent in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So I mentioned we were talking just before the podcast, but I, I oh, and also I think I mentioned it in the past as well. But um, there's this uh, YouTuber I like a lot, uh, Black Tie Kitchen he, in the in the past. Um, not, I think right now he's moving into a different direction with his channel, um, but he would make a lot of keto based, uh, keto diet based uh, recipes and cooking videos. I guess right, right, yeah, yeah. And it's a lot of fun. He's a great channel. Everyone go recommend him. Or I recommend everyone go watch him, even if you don't like cooking or don't know about cooking, because I don't like cooking and I don't know a lot about cooking. But I watch his channel because it's fun and entertaining. And also, you don't follow the keto diet. I don't follow the keto diet. But it's fun and entertaining, and that's right. that means it's a good good channel. <laughs> See, it's a good that's creator. that's how you know that they're a really good content creator because they took something that you could not give less of a shit about. Well, I wouldn't say less. I think I mean I do limit my carbs. Like I watch them. You know? Well, I mean, you know, in, from the the spectrum of people who are actually like on the keto diet, all mm-hmm. of that kind of stuff, the health nuts and everything like that. Sure, sure. Like you are the least likely demographic of people to be that's watching true. that kind of thing that's true i don't believe in diets as long as you're a of of moderate average fitness but that yeah. i but then you know then that enters a different gray or a different conversation but that's besides the point i'm not like i've uh, in my family like my brother alvin he's the chef he's the cooking guy he's gonna make you know that's just what he does he enjoys doing that it's cool it's not that i don't like cooking there's a fundamental problem with me going into the kitchen one i'm afraid of hot things Right. Hot stove, hot oven, hot pan, hot water, boiling water. I'm afraid of them. I think, I mean, nobody enjoys, you know, getting boiling water splash on them, right? Right, yeah, yeah. But I am, like, near death afraid of it. It scares me. I don't like, I I really, really don't like grease and hot oil yes, and that kind of stuff. that scares me. Like, a boiling chicken or something like that. Or boiling yeah. chicken, I don't know if that's the right word. Deep frying? Deep frying. Well, you know, when the, you're doing the chicken, then it's, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, yeah. in the in the oil, in the boil, boily, oily. It's scary. It's scary. Boily, oily, boily, oily. <laughs> in, the, in the oil bo- in the, in the oil boy. It's scary. <laughs> I don't like that. Like I've always had this. I, I mentioned the foot pot. <laughs> the right, foot the pot. pot. Yeah, For those yeah, yeah. who don't know, I used to work at a restaurant. Um, well, work is a loose term, but I used to uh, help out at a restaurant. And one time, I'm going to tell this story every time. When one time uh, I, I I'm in charge of cleaning because I'm like the bus boy janitor etc cetera, etc cetera. not janitor but you know let's do all the 
dishwasher, that type of shit, right? Yeah. And I had to take the pho pot and, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're done for the day, right? So we're cleaning. And I got, and the pho pot was still going. And it was hot as shit. And it's a metal pot with metal handles. And the stove is metal. Uh, the stove and the, uh, is metal. And the dials are metal. And it's hot as fuck. It's too hot for me to touch the dial to turn it off. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to grab the pho pot. The pho pot is hot as shit because it's hot. And it's metal. Metal is hot. Um, normal people would say, well, you grab one of the mitts or the towel or something. I'm 17. I'm scared. I don't know. I can't think for that fast, right? So it wasn't ever since that day, but that day didn't fucking help. So <laughs> now I'm like, I'm scared of hot things. Hot things freak me out. Uh, so, I feel kind of bad for laughing because it is like a it, genuine. It's fear. okay. It's okay. I do think it's pretty silly too, but I, it scares me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's really fascinating talking to people and seeing what things genuinely scare them and what things don't. And I, I you, really, are you afraid of spiders? F- fucking horrified. What? Right. Would you consider yourself to have arachnophobia? Oh yeah, hundred percent. For me, I mean, I don't. I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not cool with them. But you know, like I, <laughs> I like I like if I see one and it's pretty big and it's kind of fuzzy, I'd be like, all right, you stay there. <laughs> You're um, like you are chilling. I'm gonna leave yeah. you alone. But in general, if it's like kind of like relatively small, I'd be like, okay, I'm cool with it. Yeah. You know, like it's it's like I, I later nerd like, but. Just right, right, right. But for some people, and maybe maybe even you, you see it and you're like, nope, nope. Yeah, nope, I, I nope. nope the the fuck. size of this size, teeny tiny. Nope, not doing it. Fuck that shit. Okay, see, you know what I mean. Yeah, and that's interesting because for me it's not that bad. But now if it's the size of my hand, it's right here, and it's fuzzy as fuck, I'm gonna be like, nope. <laughs> I today if it, I, there's a arachnophobia threshold. That is a threshold. <laughs> if it could cover both of my eyeballs with its body, <laughs> that's when I draw the line. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 dude, I fucking hate spiders. Exactly, right? And that's me with hot, it's hot stuff, like boiling stuff. Like, obviously, no one is, like, cool with boiling shit, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's cool. But that's the thing, right? Chefs, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's nerve damage, but, like, they're just like, ah, oh, it's boiling, it's fine. It's like, it's like, it touches my hand. Ouch. Ooh, <laughs> For me, that that terrifies me. But you know, you you look at chefs cook. Even like my brother, you know, he's just there on the stove and shit's boiling, and he's doing stuff with hot things, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, he's not grabbing the, like the fucking stove by the, or he's not like grabbing the pan by the, not the hand, like by the fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's fine. Obviously, not that. But in general, the the, the is that competence being near near uh, hot things, I guess, which I don't have. That's one factor of why I don't cook. The second factor is I'm clumsy. Death, yeah. I'm deathly clumsy. My family knows this. I'm super clumsy. I drop. I move too fast, um, and that's not for any reason. Like it's not. It's hard to explain it because it's not something I can control. I just like moving faster. I like speaking fast, as I you could probably tell. Um, I like moving in fluid in a fluid move. Like I mean, imagine. It's gonna sound so fucking stupid. Imagine, right? Water bending. Okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the the way but where every all the movement is connected and flows together. Right? That actually makes sense. I'm not sense. doing this shit. I'm I'm not doing that. Wait, that was for like lightning and shit. Well but but lightning is a uh is de- is a derived from the water bending, he said. Oh, that's right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh but but i like m- just moving fast and i mentioned before that i i exaggerate my movements a lot and it's not for any like i i'm the i'm the protagonist type reason like i'm, I'm the i am the main character of my anime type reason right i just enjoy doing it because it's fun like uh in uh when i worked at the bubble tea place if the floor was slippery after mopping you know people one just you know, you'd be careful while we're walking around, right? Mm-hmm. No, I'm sliding around and shit, you know, <laughs> in my in my um, work safe shoe, non-slip shoes, you know, just sliding around, spinning and Michael Jackson, you know, like that type of shit, right? Because it's fun. Yeah. I'm, I wouldn't say that that particularly makes you clumsy. That just means that you're just a goofy fucking guy. What makes me clumsy is that doing so, I'm not careful. So I'm dropping things, I'm spilling things, and things like that. That's what makes me clumsy. 
because I do drop things and I drop things a lot. See, so combine hot, scary, uh, hot, pain. scary pain things. I drop and, a lot of things, yeah. and I move very quickly. Bad news bears. Bad news bears. Um. So yeah, it just doesn't work out. Although recently, since I've been a morning person. Um, I've been slacking a little bit the last few days, but I'm trying to get back into it. Usually, my reset is uned because we have to. I have to wake up in the morning for it, right? Because we shoot at noon. Um, but I, I like to try and you know set up as much as possible beforehand. Mm-hmm. So if I ever fall off plus ratio, then uned is my reset. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Anyways, uh, because of that I've been making you know eggs in the morning. Mm-hmm. Weird as shit. Like this, the moment, the first day I woke up, or when I was my, I remember, I remember this. My first day of this reset, this morning reset, five in the morning. Ooh, five in the morning. Everyone's like, "What the fuck?" Five in the morning. Don't worry, I know. The reason why it was I chose five in the morning was just because I woke up and I said, "Well, I took a Benadryl beforehand, right?" Mm. And uh, if anybody has ever took a Benadryl. Um, they don't remember it because they're knocked the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Benadryl is scary, man. Like, it works really... Like, if you take a full one... Like, usually when we take it for, like, allergies or something, we take mm. a half. Dude, it's so funny because I've, I've seen, like, mock commercials, like, joking commercials about Benadryl. It's like... You know, you can't feel your allergies if you're knocked the fuck out. <laughs> it's so, like, for me, I think about it, and I'm like, why? Like, pe- it, it seems really silly to say that it knocks you out, but no, it happens to everyone. Bro. Like, it's not like some some tough guy says, oh, you're just a, you're a pussy if you, it knocks out. No, it just fucking cock, it, it clocks you out. You know what's really interesting mm-hmm. is when you accidentally keep yourself awake after that initial bit of, like... Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. You mean force yourself awake? Like, don't go to bed. Don't go to sleep for it. Yeah. During that. Yeah. And force yourself awake. That shit's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, It's a positive and a negative fighting each other, Zach. Bro. It, like, I have, like, borderline tripped balls. <laughs> <laughs> you really do trip, you do trip fucking balls when you try to fight it. <laughs> You're like, uh, uh. dude. It feels like, is that unicorn really there? Or am I sleeping? But you're you're fighting this the a meet like an instant REM sleep and yeah. wide awakeness. Like there there's wide awake and REM sleep, and it's it, they're this far away from each other. But now they're right here. Yeah. So now it's just it. Your consciousness is popping back and forth from it. Like you're. You wake and then you blink and then or you 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 see a you see uh, among us on the couch and then you blink and then it's gone. You're like, what the fuck just happened? You know, <laughs> it's it's freaky. It's weird, dude. That shit should not be fucking sold. <laughs> <laughs> just on shelves. Well, you can trip on anything on the shelves if you really try. You know. So I it's mean, like, whatever. Yeah, the thing is, is that I have never experienced anything as like close to being a hard drug as Benadryl <laughs> <laughs> and like I can't even I can't even take it anymore because like yeah. I um there was one time I accidentally took too much of it oh gosh and it was like the the liquid Benadryl and oh, I thought gosh. it was like oh, oh yeah goodness. this is for kids whatever and so I ended up taking way too much of it and I the only way that I could describe it is for that evening, it legitimately felt like I had schizophrenia. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was fucking horrifying. You cannot take it during the day. No. You need... If you take it during the day, you, it's a nap. No, it's a sleep. It's, no, it is a sleep. You're right. <laughs> so, let me, so, I took a Benadryl... This, like, so, my first reset, um, I slammed a Benadryl. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm changing my life around. Now you gotta understand at the at this point in time I've been waking up at four p.m. Right, and I was just like, okay, I am never gonna be a morning person. Even though I am right now, I'm like I'm waking up in the morning. I'm not a morning person. I'm yeah. miserable. But I'll even 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 me. I'm like, okay, four p.m. is a bit. <laughs> that's a bit much. <laughs> You're like maybe we could reel it in <laughs> just a little bit. You yeah. Know? So I was like, okay, you, I, I've said this before. Aim high, swing low. I'll just slam one. And I'm going to just start with, like, I'm going to wake up really fucking early. Yeah. And obviously, I'm not going to stay there, but we'll see where I land, right? 
Yeah. Um, so wake up. I take. I don't remember when I take it, but I just know that I woke up at five. Um, and I'm like, fuck. It's not wasn't quite a little too early, but okay. Yeah. But now I can't wake up because you if you once you wake up from Benadryl, you don't go back to bed. Yeah. Um, because Benadryl isn't a you wake up, and then you're like, uh, five more minutes. No, you're just, you're a. <laughs> for the audio <laughs> listeners it's like i sleep benadryl real shit that that you're, Bro. you're up it's a squidward meme yeah it, it's like you you really do feel like just you're 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 up like okay i mean if i sit on my i'm i, I can't do it i can't go back to sleep as i gotta take another benadryl i do that but no so i'm awake and it's five in the i'm like fuck well it's a bit too early even my parents are still sleeping my dad who wakes who uh, wakes up <laughs> actually at 5 five thirty ish a.m um isn't even awake yet so i'm like well i can't go back to sleep so i guess i'll just get up so i get up and you know do my dailies and stuff because i figured you know if i'm gonna do my dailies i may as well just do them now get them over with you know things like that and the point i'm trying to make is at some point it wasn't that day but a couple of days afterwards no i think it was that day it was the first day my first reset um, and at this, uh, I, I did all my dailies and stuff. And by that point, it was like 6, 6.30. And then I worked out. And by that point, it was like 7. And I'm like, well, fuck. I'm just going to like, you know, let's just like make eggs or some shit like that. I'll make eggs. And I went downstairs. And I popped out the frying pan, you know. Mm-hmm. Just made some eggs. I made toast. put jam on it. You know. <clears throat> mm, fantastic, right? Put it on the plate. Put it on the table. Sat down. And I looked at the plate. And I was like. Did I really just make eggs and toast? <laughs> Bro, it's Did so, I just do that? <laughs> it is so fascinating. <laughs> Zach, I don't even make cereal in the morning. In my 23 years of living, I've never made myself breakfast. I've been taught how to make eggs. That's it. It's really fascinating when your brain just is like, <laughs> fuck it. I'm going to make I, eggs and toast. I made eggs and toast. Zach, I, am, I grew up... I don't eat breakfast, but when I did, it was the lame. It was cereals. It was pop tart. It was hot pocket in the micro. That's all it was. And then for some, I I fucking took the pan. I oiled the pan. I cracked an egg. I I I toast jam. I was listening. I was listening to some tunes in the morning. I was like, I I literally sat down and had a fucking reality check. I was like, what what just happened, dude? I just. Did I just go on autopilot and just cook myself fucking breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> it was the strangest out of body feeling I've probably ever had in my life. It's it's interesting because I've had that happen a couple of times <laughs> where I would like be looking in the fridge and I'm like fuck, I don't know what I'm going to eat. And then I just see a carton of eggs sitting there. Mm-hmm. And then next thing I know, I hear the toaster going off. And all that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. And I look down and I have a plate full of eggs that are like actually seasoned with like spices and stuff. Right. And like it's actually a decent meal. And mm-hmm. I'm like, how the fuck did I just Yeah, it, how it did feel- we how did we get here? It feels like it was like a breakfast skinwalker. Like I, I haven't <laughs> <laughs> I haven't touched a frying frying pan in years. But eggs. But eggs. I was like, oh, "Fuck it, why not?" Like, I'm like, it was. It's a weird moment because I'm, I'm awake, and right. I think that's the thing that people, like, morning people, like, kind of need to strive to hit. Right, that moment of, okay, I'm awake. I just need to do something while I still am awake. Right, because there's that limbo period of when you just wake up and when you're ready to work. Yeah, right. We just wake up, ready to work. In between that is that limbo period, and the limbo period is trying to reach from point A to point B. Right, from waking up to getting like pr- from pr- from waking up to okay time to be productive so that ends up being i need to make breakfast i need to work out or exercise i need to do what you know whatever that ritual is right um so now it's been making breakfast dude honestly if you woke up in the morning and made yourself coffee with that fancy little yeah thing, uh, yeah i'll get to that in a bit but yeah i've been i made me myself some coffee some iced coffee yeah also, yeah, and there's some coffee right cheers. there. Cheers. Oh, cheers, yes. Nice. That was good. That that was beautiful. Um so if you made yourself some coffee, you know, maybe <sighs> threw some toast in the in the toaster or whatever mm-hmm. and just kind of were like, do I feel like cooking a lot of food? Cuz like even even just eating toast in the morning, you know, it 
it can kind of like jumpstart your mm-hmm. metabolism and everything mm-hmm. like that. Um, and I know that it's really hard to eat like right when you wake up. Yeah. I usually don't eat right away. Um, so I'll get to, I, I have established a routine now, now that I've been doing it for about two weeks. I've established a routine. Proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So a part of it has to do with the coffee now that it's a new addition. Actually, starting today, this mm-hmm. morning, I just did it. Oh. This is, like I said, this is my first first attempt. Oh, I thought you tried it with the, the instant coffee. Stuff. Oh, that was my first. Okay, so that was not good. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> I tried it with instant coffee, and that shit was not good. It was it tasted like fucking rocks. It was not it great. It tasted like burnt. It was just tasted like charcoal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there was a... Oh, yeah, that's right. I was mentioning Black Tie Kitchen. Um, this is... Okay, this is weird because I I brought up Black Tie Kitchen before for one... For one... Um, for that cooking topic, but he also ends up being uh, a top... The same topic for the coffee because this is a recipe as well so it's a weird roundabout circle of life thing we just hit i'm gonna try to hit this random weird uh non-linear bullet point that i've been trying to hit so my daily schedule i started with matcha um with tea because okay i because of the same reason i've been writing things down um part of it is just stimulating the brain as much as possible Mm -hmm. the reason being is to wake yourself up so i mentioned that limbo period this is this is anecdotal. I need to say this because I'm not a morning person. I have no experience of being a morning person other than miserable school mornings, right? So this is me, a night person who wakes up at 3, 4 p.m. typically. Um, suddenly jumps, jump shift transitioning into a morning person, right? <clears throat> so for the same reason that I've been writing things down, I got into coffee and making tea and stuff. Because I needed more things to do to stimulate the brain to reach for that point A to point B from wake up to productivity. Mm-hmm. And I found that like, we have a coffee machine, right? Mm-hmm. Or a, co- a coffee machine. Like the, what, what is it called? The Keurig? Keurig? Yeah, that thing. Um, the Keurig, you know, and the, the, the pods and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's nice, right? But it's too, it's not, it's not enough of a process. Right. Because it makes it's not, good coffee. Though. It does make good. Yeah, it's totally fine. I mean, I lived off of that for twenty three years, right? And it's totally, it's been totally fine. Um, the problem was just that you know, it just wasn't a process enough, or, or yeah, it wasn't enough of a process to get my brain moving, get my body moving, get my energy moving, right? I think you would really like French press coffee. See, people have told me that, and because it's quite of a process, but it's also I heard it was like an overnight thing. No, so. Um, well, you can cure oh, for, cold, overnight- for cold brew. For cold brew, that's right, right. what it that's, is. That's right. Um, but in- I know this now because I've been getting in touch. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it usually only takes like five, ten minutes, mm-hmm. maybe. Right. But it's really satisfying to watch it happen because you're like, yeah, I've seen. You know, yeah. you you pour in the hot water and you put in all the coffee beans. Or like the coffee grounds, and you mm-hmm. just let it chill for a bit, right? And then when you press it down, it has that little filter thing that yeah, pushes the plunger. All, yeah, that pushes all the coffee grounds to the bottom, mm-hmm. and then it's just like this beautiful creation. Like my dad, um, my dad's always been like a coffee connoisseur because he's been drinking coffee mm-hmm. religiously every single day mm-hmm. for like fifty years, basically. Mm-hmm. And so he got he went through a phase where he was trying to find like the best way to make coffee Mm -hmm. which i find absolutely fucking hilarious Mm -hmm. but it i mean you do you boo boo like no, i I agree it is pretty silly but it's better than the alternative of like going out buying coffee going out and like buying energy drinks and that kind of thing like honestly if anything i think i just need to be more creative with like how i make my Mm. coffee and those types of things because you replace energy drinks yeah. Maybe a fewer migraines. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's an interesting topic for sure. Just trying to find... Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. A little bit of a side tangent, but sure, sure. also, you know... Well, I still have more to talk about it, so we can use that to go back. Okay. So go ahead. Um, Just remind me to do that. Okay. We'll keep on. Oh, oh, Okie okay, dokie, okay, Fuck y'all, yeah, Fuck y'all, yeah, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's so good to see you, buddy. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad. Morning that... Nuki is weird. <laughs> I've noticed as the last couple episodes, Morning Morning Nuki has been silly Nuki. 
Nah, that's all right. That's the best kind of nuki. Anyway, so yeah. one of the things that I find so fascinating mm-hmm. is my dad's inclination to try to personalize things, customize things, make them better and make them his own. Okay. And Elaborate. So what I mean Animals. by that is like he, you know, he's the type to buy a motorcycle and then, you know, peel back the seat and like cut out the foam to make mm-hmm. it so that it's like more comfy to sit in or so modic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's a modifier and a tinkerer at mm-hmm. heart. And so I found myself kind of having my own version of that. And like it was it was really apparent when he was going through that journey of like figuring out what kind of coffee he likes to make. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, we had at one point we had like an espresso machine, we had a Keurig, we had, mm-hmm. you know, just a regular coffee pot. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he was just finding every and any little way to make it his own. Like he would make Americanos mm-hmm. or like cappuccinos. Um, I should ask him to see what I can make. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really, really fun when you kind of go down that rabbit hole. But, mm. you know, he he's definitely inspired me a lot to just kind of take things and and mess with them a little bit tweak Mm -hmm. them a little bit and turn it into you know something that is my own and it's like you know it's it's how it's mine Mm -hmm. um and so that's that's a super fun thing that i found with him and like finding things that i like more or or changing things to make them better Mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah yeah well that that also helps to when you create that process you get that routine yeah so that'll bring me back to my morning routine there we go nice nice so i've begun making so i've always done this coffee thing right Mm -hmm. and then i i just randomly this i think it was starting last week i've always i was really curious about making matcha and by that i mean i thought i've just i love matcha like matcha is one of my favorite just flavors tastes in like of all time matcha tea ice cream just matcha everything and it's not for everyone it's mm-hmm. it's a very uh it's a very mature taste it's a it's very an acquired taste it's, a, for sure. it's an acquired taste it's very bitter but i mean even if you add sweetener like it, 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 it's 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 interesting right you either like it or you don't like it and mm-hmm. it's cool if you don't like it it's no worries um i consider it to be more of a mature taste and, a, and not in the same way as like coffee is a mature taste mm-hmm. but in a way where you just have acquired that uh, a specific bitterness to your tongue that you can or that you're okay with in the same light as you uh someone who can enjoy black coffee yeah in a yeah, way yeah. right so whenever i remember working at bubble tea there's, there's always there every now and then there'd be a kid who orders matcha and be like are you sure dude <laughs> he's like yeah i love matcha i'm like wow I don't how, know, how old are you, are you? How old, like how are you hey, Devin, what the fuck you raise this, does, does your kid drink coffee? <laughs> does your kid file his own taxes? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Homie just drinks straight espresso. <laughs> he goes to school, everyone else has his chalky milk, and he's drinking an Americano. <laughs> That's funny. No, but it, it, it's funny like that. But matcha is a very simple drink mm-hmm. because all it is is powder, and then you just prepare it how you want to make it for ice lot, for iced teas, for milk teas for hot teas it's it's pretty basic and i thought about this and i was like i I really wanted to get into tea like i love tea but the whole process is really silly and i also don't really like making like large batches of tea or anything like that and i always wanted to make iced tea but every time i tried it never really worked out and i was like this fucking sucks because i actually this may sound controversial but i prefer iced over hot tea and coffee Ooh, interesting. You know, I think I just haven't gone for uh, far enough down the iced coffee rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. I I do really really enjoy iced tea. Mm-hmm. Um, I just drink tea for a different reason, if that makes sense. Like, so to the, soothe your vocals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> when I'm when I'm you know doing shows and all of that kind of stuff. Like, it's generally the reason that tea is used for, just to kind of uh, smoothen out the you know the throat and the insides and stuff yeah especially like hot tea to expand and stuff and to yeah kinda... yeah yeah so that that's like basically the extent of how much i drink tea mm-hmm. in general um, right. and i mostly drink it hot for that reason right 
But I've had some really, really, mm-hmm. really good iced teas, and I've yeah. had some really good iced coffee as yeah. well. I mean, I love hot drinks as well. Still, like I, I just prefer ice. Like I love a hot tea. A hot tea is really nice. Like mm-hmm. the it sounds so stereotypical in Asian or an uh, anime, but it's like you you take the sip and you go, <sighs> you know that that sigh. Yeah, that's so nice. It's just so pleasant. Going uh, after after spending most of the day outside in the cold oh, and doing all yeah, this kind of so stuff, nice. you know, just sitting down with a hot cup of mm-hmm. tea or coffee mm-hmm. or hot chocolate or anything like that. Anything that you can consume without chugging is nice. Mm-hmm. You know that you have to take your time drinking. Honestly, that I think that that is one of the things that people do with a lot of different things mm-hmm. like black coffee americanos mm-hmm. you know a lot of really bitter things like even yeah. um, i mean you can still yeah you can still chug them but it's not like you you the, as you drink it it's more encouraging to just take it little by little right and when you do things like drink black or drink you know this or that um it, you are able to maintain that flavor as long as possible mm-hmm. and especially with iced if, I mean, if you don't finish your coffee in time, you're going to be a very sad boy because that thing is going to taste like shit. Right. You know what I mean? It's going to taste like water. Right. And because I'm a, I'm a sipper, um, well, I chug a lot of things, but as I continue to drink certain things, I've begun to sip more. Um, ice has been more forgiving for that matter. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I've been getting into matcha because it's super simple. Um, and I have my own little recipe. It's just, uh, it's, it's. It's a uh, it's plays on someone else's recipe on YouTube that I found, but I kind of made it just kind of adjust it a little bit of my own, where I do. Um, you're supposed to do teaspoons, but I I have a scale, so I just measure it by scale about three grams of matcha, which is a good about a good amount. Usually you go by like uh, half teaspoons or teaspoons rather, because mm-hmm. um, matcha is really strong. So you don't want that much. Like matcha is like the cap. Basically, it's like how much caffeine do I want? That's how much matcha I put. I was here when you made it for the last. That episode. was pretty strong. Like I was testing the waters, and I realized, like I I do ten grams of matcha. That's a lot. I realized that was a lot after I thought about it, and I thought about how much matcha I used to how we how much matcha we used to put in our drinks when I worked at Bubble Tea, and I was like, oh, maybe I'm putting too much. <laughs> Were you just fucking wired after that? On, no, honestly, not really, because I my I mean I was I was an avid Red Bull drinker for like my entire year of high school, so ca- caffeine it takes a bit, you know. Um, for I me realized to really get wired. I realized I'm the exact same way, mm-hmm. and like, bro, okay, can we go down another rabbit hole? Sure, sure. Um, so as long as we have this one topic that we keep trying to reroute back to, we can we can stay on topic. Well, it it's topical to the extent of like we talk about like coffee and matcha sure, and tea sure. and all those types of things, and then we mm-hmm. talk about like why people drink it, and then it's like, oh, what you a know, classy episode! <laughs> the the We're caffeine the all... pinky out episode. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ooh, pinky, pinky out. out, pinky out, pinky <laughs> out. <laughs> um, but you know, you a you SpongeBob episode, pinky out. <laughs> What was what that was the water one or when he was going to meet Sandy for the first time? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Pinky out when he was like dying. <laughs> water water pinky out. Before he took the <laughs> before he he slammed that wa- that flower vase. He's like pinky out. <laughs> <laughs> so That's funny. sorry go ahead. What I figured out is that my tolerance for caffeine has grown exponentially, mm-hmm. and I didn't even notice it really. Because there was there was a period of time where this is surprising. I drank three energy drinks a day, and I mean not surprising to me because you and I both. So you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but like this was this I, sounds bad, but like high school and college just sucked. Like I, I'm just you know, it, it, yeah, you just you, had to. There was no it was way survival. to live without it. And for people who were like, oh, that's too much, and then you think about it. Oh wait, you know, I probably drank the equivalent in coffee. Yeah, or. In like bangs or yeah stuff like that, bro. Bangs are dangerous. They're very dangerous. Yeah. So I went from drinking three of those a day to like you know I would have an energy drink or like a coffee every day, mm-hmm. um, and you know that was just kind of like to keep the baseline, right. you know. And then um, I realized. So fast forward to to present day, you know, I was hanging out with Jackson, and Jackson was going to go to the gym, so he took pre workout. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ended up realizing that the gym was closed after you took the pre-workout. So he was Mm -hmm. like, yeah, he's hyped. Yeah. Um, and so 
we decided to go rock climbing and I ended up taking the same amount of pre-workout that he did. And I mean, granted, I felt, I felt like I could, you know, conquer the world and right, fight right, right. God. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't like, I wasn't nearly at the same place that Jackson was, mm-hmm. which was super fascinating. And, you know, we, we talk about how, um, different things affect different or like how different things affect people differently. Sure. Like, you know, you talk about like alcohol or, Mm -hmm. you know, any type of drug, how it, how it can like, it's very individualistic the Mm -hmm. way that it affects your mind and it affects your body. Mm -hmm. Um, and the same thing goes with caffeine and sugar and all those types of things. Um, and I realized that night that I was like, Oh shit. Like I'm, I'm pretty content right now. Like I'm chilling. I, I do feel a little itchy, but like other than that, it was just kind of like, mm-hmm. sure, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and so that that was kind of that moment where I was like, oh shit, my tolerance for caffeine is way too fucking high. Yeah, yeah. I've mine mine is still pretty high. Like I uh, I don't know. I, I I think it's impossible to live off a cup just a singular cup of coffee a day. Oh god, no. Yeah, that's just impossible. And I think. I mean, I think one should be able to, and I, I know some people have just cut ca- caffeine off completely. And to the, I'm trying to reach that point, um, but that's more of a. It's gonna be a gradual, gradual in decrease. Um, probably as I become more of a morning person, get more, more, more routine, and probably want to start working again um, when I start adopting a more uh, a more reg- <laughs> normal person schedule. Right, and it could be possible. I only live off a cup, um, or even cut it off completely because I know just caffeine is just not in incredible as far as like you know things like anxiety and stuff right uh, but that's a whole nother topic um but these are kind of small steps i'm taking as i'm going back into this whole routine thing but uh, you know mm-hmm. i i want to blame which is ends, ends up being another tangent but i'm not going to do that because maybe that can be another reserved thing because school I, we i talked about it a little bit school was not helpful in that whole caffeine ordeal mm-hmm. it really wired us to make us just consume unhealthy god un- ungodly amounts of caffeine in order to, to operate in early mornings and late nights to which people say oh well you just go to you go to class and you just do your homework and you know as soon as you get home from school and it's fine right it's not fine why is it not fine in on paper of course that's fine mm-hmm. why does it not work well because you have quote unquote homework and tests and stuff for every single class for six periods that and you they need to finish by the end of the day right and also they they had this expectation of you to spend multiple hours on the homework mm-hmm. and i mean it only ends up getting worse as you continue education and all that kind of stuff so like the dependency on caffeine especially um for you know the the procrastinators like us who end up waiting until the last minute and submit a paper that's due at midnight on uh, at 11.59. Let's do basic math, Zach, okay? There's 24 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. And let's say you need seven hours of sleep. Let's just say, let's just use that number. Okay. Now, that's a lie because studies have shown t- uh, youths actually need about about around nine, uh, nine to ten hours of sleep. Mm-hmm. But for now, let's just say seven. So seven hours is already gone. So now we're at 17 yeah, yeah. 17 hours. Yeah. You have six periods and each of them and let's say that we're going to equate an a- an average of an hour or so six six periods and that's going to equate to about let's just say 6 hours. Mm-hmm. So 6 hours 6 more hours is gone. So now we're at 11. And each each class is going to have an average of an hour per day for their homework. So that's another 6 hours. So now we're at um 5 yeah. And you need to eat. And you need to eat. And you need and to. And you need to. Like travel places, like driving time, all of that kind of stuff. It's even simpler than that. You need to take a break. You're going to play video games. You're going to go out with your friends and stuff like that. You need to, you need to take a break. And right. I haven't even accounted for extracurricular activities yet. Oh, God. Yeah. So all of a sudden, how in the fuck, right? Is it is a is a 
16, 17 year old, not supposed to consume copious amounts of caffeine in order to 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 maintain that schedule. And also that that is giving like zero wiggle room. And some people work after school. Right. And some people live far away from school or commute really far from school. Or live in a situation where they have to do thing or or, or maybe even they get they have to do groceries for their family because they're already out or something. Yeah. So many so many layers add to this whole thing where it's like, okay, you're telling me that I shouldn't as a as a, a teenager, I don't need caffeine. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> because they're not gonna let me drink it in school. Well, kind of, it's, it's frowned upon. Yeah, I mean, no one can then stop again, you. Then <laughs> again, we did have the kickstarts, and that was probably the worst thing. Energy drinks served in a vending machine in a high school is probably the worst idea anybody can ever have. <laughs> Bro, do you know how much fucking money they made, though? Oh, I, I know, but it's such a fucking stupid idea. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the, here's the annoying part, though, is that it was not even, like, the energy drinks that everybody wants. Like, the Monsters, the rock stars, the Red yeah, Bulls. Yeah, but it's still a cope. It's still way more than just a, for, than a soda. Right. But it, eh, it... What I'm saying is the, the, the presence of it, whether it's a Kickstarter or not, is a bad idea in a high school. Oh, dude, I would drink, like, two of those a day. I know, me too. That's the problem. And I would buy drinks from Fairway before school. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gone now, probably, right? The Kickstarter machine? I don't remember. I the last time I was at the high school was like, yeah, a while ago. I hope it's gone. <laughs> Honestly, low key, kind of want to. Once we once we get done with recording everything like that, I'm gonna bug Kiri and see if I could drop by the school. Oh, that'd be now fun. I, now I want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> she take me with you. No, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, that's just a side tangent for just caffeine tolerance. So, but I don't know. That's, it's just something I thought about. But anyways, I like to think I've been doing a lot better, especially since I don't slam I mean, three to four Red Bulls a day anymore. You so, have you know. been. Yeah. You have been doing a lot better. I still need a lot. So here's my daily routine as far as like what I need to do that I've just, that I've created. Right. God, how long have we been trying to get It's there? all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it still continues this buildup. So I apologize. Everybody's on their toes now. Um, what does he do in the morning? So uh, I've begun to do matcha, and I, I have this. Ing- I, it's not based. It's not based on the what we do at work. I don't think I'm allowed to share that. Um, but it's based off just a video I found for some Korean guy who like he he's really he's really buying into the whole uh, making. He has a series that's literally called "Of Course It's Better Than Starbucks," and, and I'm like, all right, this is a bit on the nose, but sure, why not? You know, he's a, he's a good, he's a good guy. Isn't that the same guy that you were talking about? That um... no, it's not black tie coffee or black tie kitchen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This coffee recipe is from him, but now I'm talking about this matcha recipe. Gotcha. Um, okay. It is based off of his, but it's it's not quite exact. So I mentioned that I don't really do teaspoons; I do grams, which you that's not quite how you measure that, but it's whatever. Um, now I do three grams of matcha powder, which is not a lot. Well, it's mm-hmm. it's an okay amount. It's an okay amount. It's a, it's pretty decent. Three grams of matcha powder about. Uh, about 90 to 10 grams of sugar. That sounds like a lot, but, but bear with me. And then this, and that's you can, and you add sugar to, to your liking. Of course, you mm-hmm. can make it. You can use less if you want. For now, as a base, I'm just doing nine to 10 grams of sugar, um, an equal, a, a sub equal parts of honey. So about another eight or nine grams of honey. Or, or, or okay, this is I, I've created like this whole thing, right? So I do the matcha, I do the sugar, you mix them together, and then you pour two ounces of boiling water two to two two to like maybe like 2.2 ounces of boiling water um into that mixture the reason why is because uh, the matcha and the sugar uh the sugar makes the matcha easier to uh, break apart when you Mm -hmm. do boiling water if you just put boiling water in matcha you're gonna be really sad um (laughs) so that helps it mix it out once everything is uh dissolved honey that eight to nine grams like i said um then you pour you do 100 grams of ice into a cup one cup of milk and then you pour the matcha in and that's it very simple yeah so i was around for for the whole matcha creation uh oh, were you yeah did you watch him make it i don't remember if i did yeah 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 oh, okay. um you ended up making me coffee and mm-hmm. you made matcha for yourself oh, and, that's right, yeah. and it was it was so fascinating just seeing how calculated it was it was like yeah it, and i think that's just drilled into me just because when, at work we were down to the measurements, like plus yeah. or minus like one, two grams. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're, we're really down. We were really in there. So it's really drilled into me. And also, I, I, I kind of enjoy that. I'm not, a, again, because I'm not a chef or a cook or anything. I'm not at the point where I can just like, yeah, that's about enough sugar or that's about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not at that point yet. Um, so that helps me. And plus, I bought the scale. I'm going to fucking use it, right? So <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> You're like, well, somebody won't let me use it to measure drugs. So I guess I'll <laughs> fucking use I it for I'll matcha. Do, well, I guess I'll use caffeine, you know? <laughs> Fine. Fine. God. I'll use that drug. So, yeah, I've been doing that. And that's a whole process of in itself. And I was talking about the whole routine thing to really stimulate your brain. Uh, your brain. Right. And because of that, I am basically by that time, by that point, um, I'm, I'm, I'm awake. I'm pretty it's well like, awake. It, it's almost like a uh, like a waking up ritual. Yeah. So like the second you you finally sit down with your cup of of matcha, you're you just take a yeah, sip and you're like, is, yeah. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's nice. And in between, so I I make breakfast while I'm making breakfast. I finish my breakfast before I'm finished with my breakfast. Then I start matcha. It's a really weird thing, but I've 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 I've, I've like nailed it. So it it's really cool that this is where you've ended up because I remember you and I talking about um, like you kind of struggling to get up in the morning. And I mean, same, but everyone. Yeah. Um, but you found that, that kind of order of operations where you would go downstairs and like light a candle or you would like, um, mm-hmm. you know, there were, there were certain things that would get you out of bed and then kind of get you up and moving for long enough mm-hmm. that, you know, you're not wanting to just go back to sleep. Right. And so you having this routine of like, I'm going to make breakfast, I'm going to make myself a drink, whether that's iced coffee, matcha, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, that that's definitely a huge step in the right direction to like get you to the point to where that just becomes second nature. Mm-hmm. And then you're just doing it all the time. Mm-hmm. And now I want to go home and make eggs and toast. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> eggs and toast are nice. No matter how hard I try to burn those damn eggs every single time. That's all right. It's really easy to burn eggs. Like I, even if you do like medium heat, it's really easy. Like the, it's really easy to burn the bottom of the eggs. Yeah, I also don't like. I probably don't check it as often as I need to. Like, just check the bottom, see if it's like brown or not. Yeah. But the, the what? God, we're gonna go back to that. Um, it's just like the top of the egg. You know, it's all yellow and white. It's really, and then on the bottom is it gets browner and browner. And I don't. And the way we make eggs, we don't scramble them, so we're not really flipping it or anything like that. So I don't really see the bottom. So my mind, as someone who doesn't really cook a lot. I look at the yellow and the in the white. I'm like, that's not cooked yet. And then the bottom is just, it's just black. <laughs> it's about to catch on fire. <laughs> Homie needs an angle grinder to get that <laughs> that top layer of fucking char off. Yeah, it's not great, but this is not that bad. Like I, I'm getting better at it day by day and day. Um, but that brings me now to coffee, which I've tried. Uh, I remember when Brady came on. He talked about he did the French press thing, right? And he had this. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Ever since that day, I was interested because coffee. I'm not a coffee person. Like I drink, I drink coffee like every day, you know. But I wouldn't consider myself like a coffee person. Like I don't really know what the things about coffee mean. I just, I just drink coffee. Like You're not a coffee aficionado. No, I'm not. Like as for your, like basically the difference be- between like your dad versus my dad. Yeah. They both drink coffee religiously every day. But your dad enjoyed the the nuances and the in the in the you know the different things. My dad just drank coffee, Keurig. Yeah, Boom. Keurig every single day. It was it was for utilitarian reasons. Right. Same with me. Um, but I always thought that the idea of like coffee and uh, what's the word like barist, barista is that the word barista barista ing <laughs> is fascinating. It's always been fascinating to me. Yeah. But it. But it's one of those things where I'm like not too too into it, but it's fun to watch, and it's it's, it's fascinating. So I don't know how far I'll get into just whole making coffee, but as long as I obtain this ritual. So I got the I got a I got a drip dripper dribbler dripper type of thing. It's like dripper. a dripper dripper, and I bought this kit in the this glass this heat safe glass thing. And I got like it's it's I have a whole little teeny tiny setup, and it's really nice and cute. Um, dude it's really nice like when we when we were downstairs i was looking at it and mm-hmm. it's it's a good little piece of mm-hmm. kit that you got going on yeah i don't have a grinder um i haven't really gotten into that yet for now i'm just gonna buy course and then i'll decide when i want to start grinding my own beans um but for now i'll just keep buying course unground beans are like way cheaper yeah that's what i've heard and i'm i just want to notice as well but for now i mean i'm getting into it so um 
bro, I need to, I need to. I mean, hey, if you have shoot a, you some like recommendations and stuff. Shit, man, if you, have like, a, if you have a spare, if you have a spare grinder, let me know. <laughs> do I? I <laughs> might actually. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely send you some like. like a hand one. I'll do that. That'd take fucking forever. Well, actually, I mean, for a single for a, cup of coffee. Yeah, for a single cup for the experience as well. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, my uh, my dad definitely got me super into like different types of coffee grounds mm-hmm. and like, you know, all of the the beans and like all yeah. of that kind of stuff. Like um, there's one coffee company that I'm sure you've heard of, uh, Black Rifle Coffee. Yes. Um, I have... I was looking at them. Interesting. Yeah. So I have pretty much exclusively drank Black, R- Black Rifle Coffee mm-hmm. for like over a year. Mm-hmm. It's some good shit. Mm. And like, I literally have an in case of emergency bag of black rifle coffee sitting in my room. In case you need to snort it. Yeah. If I, if <laughs> I need a pick me up, you know, <laughs> just do a quick bump, a little a key bump of a little fucking <laughs> of beans. <laughs> <laughs> of the butt. <laughs> Bro, have you heard of people doing like coffee suppositories? Oh, God. You must just, just fucking eat it with a spoon at that point. Jesus Christ. Oh, no, not the beans, like actual brewed coffee. Up the... Really? Yeah. Why? They say it's good for your colon or some shit. Uh, I could see that, I guess, maybe. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if your body absorbs the caffeine. D- mm. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how... I don't know how that works. I don't, I don't either. And and I'm kind of scared to like dive into detail about that. Me as well. (laughs) I've always just considered suppositories as like a myth. So I don't know. (laughs) Nope. It's real. In my head canon, it don't exist, Zach. Other than in That's a good life that you should continue to live. To continue living. (laughs) But yeah, dude, it's so, it's so fascinating. um, Talking about just morning routines, talking Mm -hmm. about like, you know, everyone goes, throughout their day-to-day life a little bit differently Mm -hmm. and so it's really cool to just kind of hear an honest take on it and like you know do you remember when we were talking to jackson about how he'll fresh brew a cup of coffee and then put it in the microwave because it's not hot enough and Mm -hmm. like that kind of thing i mean he's kind of no that's a bit that's an outlier but i mean it's it's his right you know it's it's the same idea it's his thing yeah and and so that idea can kind of span across everybody Mm -hmm. because you know, your your day to day could definitely look a hell of a lot different from other people, and that's a that's a very uh, very fascinating thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to turn on my. I always forget to turn this on every single time. That's all right. It's cute. It's like I, I, this scares me though because it's on battery. So when it dies, it's gonna be sad. Bro, I love the little the little bokeh balls that those right, lights yeah, make. Yeah, it's nice, right? It's a little, little, little thing. It's the, it's the little things in life, Zach. I'm like, I'm happy. You know, it, it it really is the little <laughs> things. And I, I mean, you know, all joking aside, it's like the the fun ways that you can you can personalize your day to day life mm-hmm. and just make it into something really fun and really silly, mm-hmm. like this show that we have going yes, on here. Yes. Here's a really interesting thing I've been doing for product for productivity, right? So God forbid I saw this YouTube short, right? Oh God. God forbid that they got me on this fucking thing. Like, YouTube um, shorts? YouTube shorts. Oh my God, dude. My dad's fucking hooked on that. <laughs> it's, it's, whether it's YouTube shorts or TikTok or Instagram reels or whatever the fuck you use, it's really good. At what Death it does. scrolling? It's doom oh, scrolling? Oh my God. It's way too good at what it does. Um, but yeah, I saw this YouTube short and, and okay, listen, I'm going to level with you right now. I am not a finance finance person. Right. As an Asian person, I was raised to be frugal and cheap. But in general, I'm not good at like, and and, and, and uh, whether as an Asian or not, I'm really good with numbers. Right. However, like as far as like finances goes, it's it's a, it's above me. Like that whole like accounting mm-hmm. type of understanding, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, like credit and all that and investing doesn't make any sense to me Mm -hmm. so god knows how i keep watching youtube shorts on investing and financing and 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 marketing and stuff why i don't know i just i just like looking at people talking really passionately about things that they like 
And I'm like, I don't know what he means, but he's really happy. So good for him. <laughs> I mean, you know, there, there's always going to be that thing that you're super passionate about. And I mean, you know, I don't I, know what he's talking about, but he's, he's really happy when he says it. So sure. Why not King? Yeah, something, let's go. <laughs> something about Dogecoin. I don't something know. about Dogecoin. No. So this guy, I don't, I don't, I'm just sorry. I'm, I, I don't remember his name because that's how bad YouTube shorts and TikTok is. You don't retain these type, of, you don't retain those type of things. Right. Um, but, uh, he's some, he's a really buff ass dude. You may even, he may be on TikTok as well, but he's some buff dude and he owns like a multi million dollar, uh, marketing company type thing. I think I, um, he has a hat. He wears shorts. He has yeah. A beard. Yeah. 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 He may be on TikTok as well. Um, I probably could find him if I just scroll a little bit on shorts. That's how bad it is. But, um, like he's a, I mean, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, but like the things he talked about is really cool. So sure. Uh, and he had this thing where he talks about how he wakes up really early. Like his routine is he wakes up really early, like five in the morning or something like that. And as soon as he, from, from the time he opens his eyes to when he's working is like 30, 40 minutes. Now that's a bit extreme for me, but his idea is that, as soon as he works, let's say he he wakes up and then starts like working, working, like like his job, like job working, around five thirty or so, mm-hmm. five thirty six o'clock, and he just c- continues working and working until around lunch, and by that time he's already slammed through a whole work day, and then he has the rest of the day to do whatever. Yeah, and I'm like that makes sense. So I've been trying. You smart. So I've been waking when I if I ever wake up too early, and I'm awake. I'm like, well, uh, I decided to flip the flip the flip the schedule that I made, where I normally I would do my dailies in the in the morning, but when I wake up to wake myself up. But now that I have this whole coffee and tea routine thing to wake myself up, let's just get to work. Yeah. So I wake up, get to work, or wake up. I can't quite make breakfast because it might be too early, and it's, uh, my parents are sleeping or something. This isn't five, maybe like six or so. Um, I, I I just wake up and then start working. Uh or do the tea and stuff and start working. And then I sit down and work until around nine or so. And then I'll make breakfast. And this is my break time. And I'll keep working. And I did this today. And I keep working until around, like, basically when you showed up. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I worked about, like, five, six hours. Got a lot of shit done. Yeah. So I'm like, oh. I see Not too after bad. Effects open. Yeah, After Effects yeah. is open. I'm killing myself over there, but I'm doing it. I mean, you know, it, you're you're back on that grind. I'm which back is... on the grind. For uh, not at the grind. I'm just it's just for fun, <laughs> fun, you know. Um, but yeah, just, you know, just just work, right? Yeah. And I'm like, well, it, it's interesting because yeah, I've got like basically a whole work, almost like not quite, but almost a whole workday done. Mm-hmm. So now after the podcast. Or even if I wasn't doing a podcast, after I finished, you know, a work day, I eat lunch and I could stream. Yeah. I could literally do work and stream in the same day. Which is crazy. Yeah. So after this podcast, I'm going to stream. <laughs> or, or after this shoot, I'm going to stream. And then after I finish streaming, I'll still have time to, you know, finish any more work I need to do or just hang out, play video games. For sure. And that's... in. It's interesting because it kind of works out like that. And it and it's it's like once you start uh, it's hard to say like because I mentioned I'm not the the highlighter guy, right? I'm mm-hmm. not the timetables guy. I'm not the time or uh, not time table, time frame guy. Mm-hmm. Do this during this time, do this, this time, right? But what I do enjoy is having a rough est- a rough idea of that. Right. So maybe not necessarily a time, like a like time slots for things, mm-hmm. but time suggestions for things. Right. Is how I'm operating. So it's, again, could... it's not too complicated. Like it's not too yeah. loose, but it's not too it's not too strict, but it's not loose enough where I can procrastinate. It's like you should probably do this around this time and probably finish around this time. Yeah, I was gonna say even if you put like a like mini deadlines throughout mm-hmm. the day, like you know, I want I want to have the cinematics for this edit done by around this time mm-hmm. um so that i can you know have lunch or whatever yes. you know like just having a rough idea of when you want to be done with it because mm-hmm. i mean you know if anything that could just give you opportunities to do little procrastinations as opposed to like you know throughout the entire day you're like 
fuck, I don't want to do anything. And yep. then like at the end of the day, you're like, okay, fine. I need to get stuff done. <laughs> you know, it could be like, oh, you know, I have, I have this little personal deadline where like at noon, I want to be done with all of my like editing stuff or, you know, I want to be done with any prep you need for uned. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it could be 1130 and you're like, fuck, I need to get this done and then just crank it out in a half hour. Mm-hmm. But you still like, regardless of when you started, you're still kind of getting done yes. at, at the same time. Correct. Um, and so that could be really helpful, mm-hmm. honestly. And I should, I should really look into doing something yeah. similar like that. I mean, you know me, I'm not a, a natural, I'm not, I'm I, like, I, I'm not a schedule person. Right. So even a method that I'm doing right now is working pretty well. Mm-hmm. Not too hard on myself, but not too lenient on myself as well. Yeah. A nice healthy middle where I can still kind of slack off if I really feel like it. Um, but things will still get done. Right. And still having that accountability of mm-hmm. like, all right, fine. I'm done goofing yes. around. But I do have to take naps. I'm now a nap person. You are. I'm an afternoon nap person. I have to in order to survive. There's absolutely no fucking way I can live. Like I, I, this, I've already had a matcha and now I'm having a coffee. And it's it's pretty strong actually. You had you took a taste. Yeah. This is with thirty grams of coffee beans, so it's it's pretty strong. Um, so I have a lot. There's a lot of caffeine in this cup, but even with this much, I am going to crash. Well, that's how caffeine works. <laughs> so, but also I just if I if I go to I go to bed at midnight, and if I wake up at like five or six, I only get five to six hours of sleep. So I have to make that up with a nap. Right. Right. That just it just has to happen. Um, even if it's not like an hour long, like 20 minutes or something, I just need to rest my eyes for a bit. You know, it's kind of funny because I went to bed at like four, mm-hmm. woke up at nine, and I'm here. Yep. Well, I mean, honestly, I still, you can you can function with like four or five hours of sleep. It's like possible. Less than ideal. But Less possible. than ideal, but possible. Um I mean, I've, I basically did it my did my entire uni <laughs> adventure, so yeah. <laughs> but it's not ideal, but yeah, possible. Is it because that's how I've been wired? I don't know. But I like to think that I'm. I, I, I when you're at a point where you're still trying to figure it out, I think it's fine. As long as you have well, that drive to do things, right? I think once you obtain like that, let's say a career job or a job that you're gonna hold for a while, mm-hmm. then you can kind of build your life around that so then you can time your sleep accordingly and stuff like that so it's really fascinating because there are some people who the broken sleep schedule where it's like you get you know five six hours of sleep at night and then you take a nap during the day Mm -hmm. some people just work really well with that and i don't uh, mm-hmm. because I'll accidentally take a nap and then I'll be asleep for two and a half hours mm-hmm. and I'll wake up and it's fucking 10 p.m. and I'm like, Ugh! oh, shit. <laughs> so you yeah. can't take it, take it too late. Well, or uh, it'll like, I think it's because I don't, I just dive straight into deep sleep. Like I don't mm-hmm. really spend a lot of time in REM sleep. Right. Um, So like, you know, I'm just, my brain thinks that it's bedtime. Sure. And so it's just like, all right, good night. And then mm-hmm. I wake up all dazed and confused, like sweating, just yeah. like, yeah, what well, the fuck? <laughs> the the naps, I don't. No matter what, they always suck to wake up from. I don't. Oh, yeah. I've never had a singular refreshing nap in my life. Always, you wake up and you ha- and you've regained your energy, but you feel like fucking shit. Oh, you feel like it, it's you almost like, like you you're feel, more you tired. You feel like slosh. Like it's like, oh god. Yeah, you you almost feel more tired than you did before mm-hmm. you took the nap. Right. Um, however, the way I do it is I sleep before... I take my nap before dinner because my parents wake me up for dinner. Oh, interesting. No matter what. Well, not no matter what, but my body wakes up on the end because they text me like dinner's ready. And then my body just recognizes that. Whether yeah. I hear the ringtone or not, or the, the text tone or not, my body recognizes it and I wake up. So it, it, it's fascinating, but that's how I've been doing it. Wake up, wake up, put it on So yeah, morning Nuki. It's it's a it's a ride. I will say. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. We're shooting Wednesday, so the the the, the garbage truck people are here. I mean, we almost we almost beat them. Almost. That's true. We did shoot a little bit, a teeny tiny bit earlier. 
Not yeah. too bad. Not too bad. Mm. Oh, you know, side side uh, second topic, because or kind of same topic, but I don't know. Since I'm going to the Philippines, um, I'm having headphone issues. I'm having headphone problems. What kind of headphone problems? Um, you see that box right there? See what that is? Mm-hmm. Oh, wireless headphones. Okay. So I do own AirPod Pros, right? AirPod Pros. AirPod Pros. What's the problem with AirPod Pros? Or just this form factor of wireless headphones? They could get lost. Yes, that's true. Well, it's another problem. If I'm taking a long flight. They might die. They might die. Because they don't have enough battery. Because that they're not built to do that, right? Right. So that's why people gravitate towards... Uh, the the larger ones like like that over there I have some Soundcore uh, or Anchor Soundcore Q30s, which is not their cheaper their cheapest option but not their most expensive option like in the middle yeah um and I've been trying it and I, I realized that I have spoiled myself in my audio quality because of in the Sony's and because of the Sony's because of the Sennheisers and because of the AirPod Pros why because I've been enjoying less bass, more mids, as well as more neutrals as well, but more yeah. mids. And I put those things on, Zach. And I'm listening to it. And I'm like, dude, this is fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, dum, dum. I'm like, okay, there is a few factors going on, right? One is I've... I'm not quite in audio file territory. I, the, I, that is way too far, like in uh, of, of my reach. I'm not even close to that. Right. But I have had the the oppor- I've had the ability to try flat headphones. Like when I uh, behind you, the headphones that I use for my piano, um, the, the the bigger ones, the kind of DJ studio looking ones with the gold. oh yeah 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 those ones over there. I love those headphones. They were one. They were my first quote unquote studio monitor headphones. I I do think they have a bit more of a an emphasis on a lower end, but in general, a more neutral, flatter thing than like your your Logitech headset or whatever. Right? Yeah, you know your gaming headset, right? Mm-hmm. Completely different. I fell in love with them. They're super cheap as well, so I was really I was a big fan of them. Use them a ton before I got the Sennheisers um, that you have right now, which I love. These ones. Um, so I got into studio monitors pretty quickly into my editing career because I realized they're way better. Um, anyways. But there was a time when I enjoyed the Skull Candies, right? Oh my god, dude. The fucking Skull Candies. Skull Candies. We love the Skull Candies, right? We love the beats. They're fantastic. And there was a time and place for that. And I loved them so much for all types of music. Um, so after using studio monitors for, gosh, maybe four or five years, I tried on, finally, some average consumer headphones. Such as those over there. And I was not impressed. <laughs> now, here's the issue, right? So, those are $70. Mm-hmm. About $70. So, for what, what else are we looking at for popular wireless um, headphones? Like the Sony WXM, those ones, right? The, the, the Bose, uh, what is it? Quiet Comfort or co- cute thing? They have it. Bose Comfort, Quiet, whatever they call it. I don't remember. Yeah, those are... Those are the headphones I have. I think the so. Over-ear yeah. headphones I have. Yeah, but the wireless ones. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, like three hundred bucks. Probably not yours. I mean, they have different ones. Two hundred. Two hundred. Sure, but they have different ones, right? Yeah. So the the big ones have always been like, or the really popular ones, the Sony ones and the Bose ones, and uh, I can't. I feel like I'm forgetting another one, but it's off the top. I'm losing off the top of my head. But that three hundred dollar range. Yeah. Um, and I mean those have bloated bass anyway, so that's besides the point. What I'm getting at is I I don't I don't know if one I'm old and my ears can't take the bass anymore or two it's just I just I have just understood a more refined balanced tuning and it's just better. I mean honestly which I agree with but like it, it's if is that really it because that I listen to that and I think that it sounds bloated and bassy, right? Mhm. Um, well, they're not really bloated, but it's really bassy. Um, and I'm like, well, there was a point in time where, or, or I think average, like that's like an average, like everybody enjoys that. Yeah. So I'm like, what happened? 
Well, I think it's just one of the things where I got a taste of, you know, fine dining or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. But here's a difference with that. It's that it's not... Like, those are $70. Mm-hmm. And these are $200, right? Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, there's a difference with, like, wireless and stuff like that. But those over those were 100 or so dollars. And my IEMs, my ARIAs are... Seventy dollars, and my and my shoes that I have are twenty dollars. The cost and my AirPod Pros are two hundred fifty dollars, right? So the I'm not even AirPod, AirPod Pros. Pros. I'm not talking about price at this point because the price at, at the price ends up being quality, mm-hmm. like like uh different different like slight, uh, quality of life qualities, build quality, um, tech like uh, feature quality, use uh, user interface quality or um use a what am I trying to say? Um, uh, not user interface, but um, uh, oh, I had a there's a better word for it. Usability. Not usability. Um, user experience. Ah. Right. The experience, like the experience of the user, like how it is at work. You know what I mean? Like how nice it is, right? Mm-hmm. And those things will come out of cost, unfortunately. But what shouldn't come out of the cost? Well, at a certain point, of course. But what shouldn't come out of cost is tuning. Mm-hmm. How you tune your drivers. Like if 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 you're going for ba- like you decided on a bassy like they decided, or what whether it be anchor or whatever headphone they decided on a bassy sound signature, mm-hmm. that's what they decided on. I mean I don't again I don't know I'm not too into the headphone thing especially not anymore. But I don't know how much money these things cost. But to my understanding, I mean you look at IAMs for like a quarter of the price of popular consumer cans, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like. Why the fuck? Or even like my status is over there. The status, uh, the whatever I fucking call them, status DJ duo, the gold trim ones that I said with a more flatter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, those ones. Those are 50 bucks. Or it's like, I think they're like 60, 70 bucks, right? Which were the That's same price bad. as those. Yeah. And they have completely different tunings. So. See, Mm, that's how that's how we end up going down the rabbit hole of like cabled versus wireless and like no not necessarily it's just not cable versus wireless it's just what tuning you decide to make your headphones more oh bassy, that's true like more, the levels and yes. everything like that okay that's it and oh well Arthur you fucking stupid bitch you or you can just change it with EQ because Soundcore they do have a they have they have an app with EQ and that is true Ooh. and they have a flat mode and you can make your own EQ and stuff too. But the problem, my problem with EQ is once you start messing with EQ, you are messing with it digitally, not analogically. Well, analogically. Analogically. Analogically, right? Yeah. You're messing with ones and zeros. And when you're messing with ones and zeros and you're changing the ones and zeros, artifacts happen. And I am really, really sensitive to audio artifacts. It bothers me. Some people may not, may not even notice it. If that's the case, good for you. Low bit rate audio, like even just like slightly, or you hear an audio inter, uh, audio like um, artifact, like a slight bit rate crunch. It's like it's so slight, you barely hear it, but I hear it and it bothers me. And you can hear that whenever you play with EQ, yeah. generally, um, and that sucks. I hate that, and you get that. Um, and even though I take, I go on EQ and I have a really a like I basically just kill the bass off almost immediately, um, and that. And even with even if though I do that, it's still it's still really rumbly. Um, I don't know. It's I'm just so upset. I don't know if I'm just not looking the right places, but I just can't find a neutral Harman uh, Harman tuning Harman uh, the Harman curve. I think is what it's called. Um, is a uh, is like a a study a statistical um, quote unquote average. Um, person's preferred listening thing. So there's like a cur- an EQ curve that's been mm. um, scientific, like surveyed and scientifically pro- uh, not proven, but like given uh, X amount of people, this is the preferred curve, and that's basically where a lot of professional audiophile headphone things, n- well, depending on what they do or not, need to basically try and hit that that Harman curve. Right. Um, and I enjoy that Harman curve as well. So I am I am of the majority. What's interesting is when you end up listening to headphones that have a completely flat mm-hmm. sound profile where everything is the same right. volume. That's when shit gets really crazy because mm-hmm. then, you know, one thing isn't overpowering another thing and it's mm-hmm. just perfect. Right. 
I love that. I love that type of sound. I love that as well. Yeah, especially, I. <sighs> as soon as I started listening to. Bochi the Rock, the best anime of the last season, right? Oh my god, I knew you were going to bring it up at some point. Yes, of course. It has to. It's a, it's a, it's the law um, around here. Breaking the law, breaking the law. I I mean, I've begun to listen to rock a lot more. And uh, I mean, I got into like J-Rock and like J kind of heavy metal, kind of, sort of. Um, and because of that, I've... Well, I guess... No, let me rephrase that. I got into Jap- like just J songs in general. Mm-hmm. And what's fun about them is that they continue to keep just traditional instruments drums guitars pianos and stuff Mm -hmm. so when you have a nice headphone not even necessarily good staging but just a good eq where nothing like the bass isn't overpowering and the treble isn't too shouty or whatever you know all these words that like honestly at this point it mean it it makes it it means as much sense and as as, it's as cringy as saying a keyboard is thocky i hate that word but you know I when you can hear all the instruments and they have their little tunes, it's especially when I started listening to Bochi, um, because Bochi the Rock's songs are very technical, and once you end, eventually start watching it and then maybe even listen to it on your own, um, all, all to their to their album and their songs on their own, you'll find it's very technical, um, and it's really fun. It's a very fun experience to listen to with a good pair of headphones with a nice tuning. It's a treat. And because of that, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Fuck. Oh, when you're able to hear all the instruments and, and it's e- like the song itself is EQ'd really nicely. Mm-hmm. And then you're wearing very neutral, flat sound profile headphones, like in your monitors mm-hmm. or something like that. It's just so sparkly. It is. And like, it's nice. You know, it, it ends up like widening the sound a lot which Mm -hmm. is really interesting and it's hard to explain especially if you're someone like literally like us maybe when we were in high school or something yeah or or, or even maybe even a couple years before we you and i had a chance to to have studio headphones which not a lot of people do because they're going to use you know their cheap uh headphones that came with their phone or skull candies or beats or whatever right Mm -hmm. and that's fine because that's just what we know um, until you decide to dip further or like our gaming heads and stuff right and it's just going to have that bassy consumer V-shaped curve. And that's what we all know and love. But as soon as you lose that and you get a taste of something a little bit more flat, like, I mean, nothing is going to be completely flat. It's like almost near impossible. Right. Even if it is flat, maybe some headphones are going to have a little emphasis on the bass, maybe more on the mids, maybe more on the highs, whatever they choose, right? Mm-hmm. And that's going to, and be, they do that to have that kind of differentiation between their models. Because if everything is just flat, they sound the same. And what the fuck have we done, right? So everything, right. so that 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 gives us choice to to pick what you prefer, right? That's besides the point. Anyways, no matter what you pick, it's usually as long as you pick to have a good pick. Whether however different it is, it's never going to be as bloated, bassy as something like a gaming headset or those or your typical gaming headset. You know these are things, right? These are things that I'm saying. These arbitrary words that don't make sense. But as soon as you try a nice pair of cans, you will get it. And when you listen to things, even hip hop. Mm. Even I notice it in hip hop as well. It's nice to hear the individual tracks, and it's nice to hear the eight oh eight's not overpowering everything else. You know. So to to explain um, at least a little bit about like sound profile and stuff, um, when I when I say that like in ear monitors have a very wide sound, um, basically um, it depends on like how many. Wide might not be the best word to say because when you say wide, you think of soundstage. Well, yeah, I think... Um, have you ever tried open back headphones? I have. Right. That's what you would... I would... That's like the, the bare minimum of... Or that's that's like the, the standard level for a soundstage, which an IEM can't necessarily create. Yeah, but it does... Well, it, as a natural closed back. Because IEMs are just closed back by nature. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there there are some ways that they do create some sound stage right. just with like the drivers and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not, but right. it is a closed back versus an open back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The if you okay. If you want to hear every single instrument in a one hundred piece orchestra laid out basically directly mm-hmm. in front of your brain, listen to some open backs. Yes. Those are fucking phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And if I I think closed backs like these ones and like the ones that you're wearing are 
a little bit more prone to like having really really solid bass but you can you can mm-hmm. find open backs that that do the same thing it's just mm-hmm. you know a little bit different because it's not like yeah farting in your ear directly. yeah but even the closed back i don't want it to have too much bass either right like sennheisers they focus a lot on the mids and i love that because it sounds great um, and it has a different experience from like usually the quote unquote exciting EQ is higher bass or more bass, more trouble. Right. So the opposite would be more, more more emphasis on the mids, which sound odd, but it's really it's really nice. And I love. I mean the are, mids. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No. I keep I keep kind of jumping it's in. Okay. Um, the mids are like where eighty percent of the band is, pretty much. Like all of all of like the the tom sounds, mm. the drum sounds. Other than like hi hats and cymbals and that kind of stuff, like most of that's in the mids, you know. Most of the like rhythm guitars in the mids, mm-hmm. and well, the reason why I enjoy it is because though the other the ends of the spectrum, if they're overpowering, then then it it's no fun, right? Because if the bass is too high, then the kick drum is going to be way too loud, mm-hmm. and that's all you're going to hear. And if the the highs are too sharp, then it's going to sound like it's their needles hit the the, the cymbals and S's are gonna sound like oh needles gosh. in your ear. I am so prone to sibilance; it bothers, it, like it actually hurts. It's so much, even with nice headphones. Yeah, like the slightest bit of sibilance hurts my ears. Even with even with Sony's, even with Sennheisers, I'm very sensitive to sibilance, and it bothers, and it and it sucks. It sucks to live a life like this because it hurts me. That's that's all right. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Everything's fine. But what I'm trying, uh, all of this is just saying this can be this kind of quote unquote ideal curve that I'm looking for is not a pri- to my understanding is not a price thing it's just right. a decision of how you want to tune it and I there's just no com- consumer wireless headphone that can that does that that I that is that it's of moderate price I'm not spending three hundred dollars for that because I don't go on, I don't I'm not a frequent flyer right I don't and I, if I travel I don't use headphones I'd rather have your ear- I, I don't like like even if I use my AirPod Pros, I usually have one in. Yeah. I don't ever use ANC. I don't like separ- separating myself from the world because that scares me. Because I'm gonna get hit by a car, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I I'm I'm not a big fan of that. So I always usually only have like one head, one earbud at a time. That's how yeah. I operate. And I mean, you could you could pull some some shenanigans. Who the like fuck this? does that with headphones? You know what I mean? I mean. I, I, this every once the only in a while. person the only reason why you do this is for when you want to hear something and okay and you put it back in, but no one just walks around like this. Do you walk around like this? No. Exactly. This but is I also, just also I don't wear these types of headphones when I'm out and about. Right. You know. I wear earbuds. Yeah, yeah. But some people do. Yeah. But I don't do this because this it's 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 uh, it's a bit much. And plus, I uh, the experience of one. One headphone cup is different from one earbud. Oh, a hundred percent, yeah. Also, just the fact that if you you as long as that the earbud supports it, like for example, if you do one earbud for the AirPods, mm-hmm. it turns the audio to mono, because duh. That's actually so fucking smart. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah, but if you do this, you've lost everything in the right channel. You know. Yeah, that makes sense, and it's kind of funny because somehow you manage to balance the levels in the headphones where it's not it's the exact same level hearing you talk in my ear and also in this one too well, that's good thank you very 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 fascinating anywho anywho i i uh, i've been trying to get used to them basically for the past couple of days i've been trying to like daily them as much as possible mm-hmm. just to get used to them and to be fair i have gotten pretty used to them um so maybe it's also just me just trying to remember and how i remember that i can enjoy a v-shape if i really want to but it's so like for bochi the rock right because the yeah. songs are so technical you if with a nice pair of headphones with a very good curve and good sound a decent a decent to, or a, like a, a average to above average sound staging you hear every instrument and it's fantastic it feels great Nothing feels overpowering. Everyone has their everyone has their own light. The light shines in the in the on whoever is gonna take the you know the solo or whatever. You know it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But nothing nothing is overbearing. And then I put on those, and all I'm hearing is like just 
the kick drum and the drum specifically and Bochi is like her guitar is just washed out almost. I mean, you can still hear it, but it's like washed. It's like, what's going on? I only hear the, the, the bass drum or the, 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 the bass guitar. And it's like, what's going on? It's a fart can. It is a fart can. And I'm like, we're, is this really what we listen to? No, it can't be. Am I sitting in the back of a 97 Corolla with a giant fucking 12 inch sub in the back? Yeah. I mean, I think it is just a case of I've been, I don't think it's a case of my ears have been debuffed, but from age, <laughs> I think it's the, the case of I've, I've gotten a taste of fine dining. Yeah. It, it does get really hard when you, um, are so accustomed to a specific sound and then mm -hmm. you go back to what you were used to. Mm -hmm. And like, honestly, I don't even pay attention to the sound quality of my AirPods. Like I quite frankly do not really care. It's just like when I'm out and about and doing stuff, I mm -hmm. want to be able to listen to music. Yes. And so that's the only reason why I have them around. Like mm -hmm. if I'm, if I'm wanting to have like a high quality listening experience, then I have I have like in ear monitors and then mm -hmm. I have some like really nice Bose headphones that I use. So here's another thing I want to mention that bothers me: headphone reviews. So there is this is plagued. This has been a pet peeve of mine for years since I first got into the headphone, like wi the wireless earbud headphone, whatever. Because mm -hmm. you know it wasn't really popular until you know Apple cut the uh, cut the headphone jack. And then Samsung and other Android followed suit. And then fuck you, by the way, for doing that. Well, I don't really care. I don't like wires, anyways. Um, <laughs> but that's once once like Bluetooth and wireless just devices got really popular, mm -hmm. right? Um, and maybe a couple years afterwards because it was so expensive. But as it got you know more consumer grade, I guess if you will. Um, and you were looking for base. Basically, all you're doing is looking for alternative for AirPods because AirPods is too expensive, basically. Mm -hmm. And whether it be headphones or wireless earbuds, you know, they talked about like, you know, how good the music is and the sound is and the experience. And that's fine. There's one thing they never talk about. And it's latency. And it's. Oh. And that is the number one. Th like, I, first of all, I don't know if you've ever tried to, you know. The reason why it bothers me is because obviously, like the 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 general idea of like when you wear headphones, you're listening to music, right? Yeah. Duh. No shit. What is the other fundamental thing that you do with headphones? Watch videos. Watch videos. Why is that never covered in a headphone review? Ever. You know, there was one guy who did it, and it was Jim the Re Jim from like the Jim the reviewer I forget what his name was oh my god I loved him his videos were fantastic unfortunately he doesn't make any videos anymore he's moved on in his life I don't mean he died I mean like he, <laughs> we need you to come back <laughs> I need because he always talk, he would talk about the latency if it included because latency it ends up being not just necessarily Bluetooth it ends up being on a codec level like there's LDAC and there's other codec uh, levels of which pertains to the it's some nerdy bullshit right mm -hmm. I don't need that you don't have to do that I know you don't really need want to do that. I know a lot of headphone reviews are sponsored. I get that. But at least just tell me if you watch a video, can, like are they is, is it like an old Japanese film where like I'm going to call you you know that? Yeah. That. Is it that? <laughs> that old that stereotypical image. Japanese film. Godzilla <laughs> You know, where it's just not synced at all. That's like, that is so overlooked. I think people watch, especially nowadays, consume video, audio, media more than they listen to music. That's true. Especially with TikTok, especially with YouTube and stuff. YouTube cheats, though. YouTube cheats because they, they add latency to the video according to your headphones. I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that. Yes, they do that. I found this out because... Uh, one time, um, at least with at least uh, this is my experience with Apple. Um, you can you can test this on your own, depending on what wireless buds you use. But basically, what happens is I, I found this out because sometimes I, I got YouTube Premium, mm -hmm. and YouTube Premium allowed me to you know get background play. So excuse me, I'm getting the burps now. You can listen to music, or or sorry, uh, listen to your videos. Uh, and you can close the app and you can do whatever. Or you can turn off your phone and it'll still play. Usually you would mm -hmm. like pause, right? And you're like, ugh. 
you know, so you have to leave the YouTube app on and leave your phone on, which sucks. Um, but now you can close it. What I found was that once you go back into it, it pauses for a bit. Like the video pauses, physically pauses. And then, but the audio is still going. But the video like tries, it's trying to calculate itself to where the audio is and then plays it and then plays and sync, it syncs itself and then resumes playing. And it's perfect. That's fucking wild. Why do I know this? It's because I edit, I edit Call of Duty. I edit gun sounds and Call of Duty things to music on a frame to frame, like frame perfect, sound wave perfect, you know, a basis. That shit's so satisfying though when you get it like good. Yes, of course, right? But what I'm saying is the audio and the visuals are synced together. That's how that works. Sync to the music, sync to the gunshot, gunshots, everything, right? Mm-hmm. That's how that works. But when you when you have a wireless headphones, it sounds fine. When you're texting someone, do you have keyboard sounds? Fuck no, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, you're fucking weird. I love keyboard sounds. Um, I'm also a keyboard guy, so you know. Well, I mean, keyboard sounds on a smartphone just seem. This, is this getting is this getting picked up? Yeah. This, I love that shit. Makes me happy. Um, but anyways, this is an example. If you have headphones with latency, oh, you're gonna fucking hate your keyboard, Zach. You're gonna. I hate think it that that was so the reason much. why I turned off the sound. Yes, exactly. And the reason why I know why YouTube does uh, does it cheats and gives and 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 adds latency to their video is because though their videos are perfect, videos are this. My keyboard is not perfect. When I play games, it's not perfect. When I play rhythm games, it's not perfect. When I watch literally a video on any other platform, it is not perfect. That's why I know YouTube YouTube cheat. I've never seen it. I can't I can't look it up. I've never I mean maybe I'm not looking up the right search words. I don't even know how you would look it up. But it's something I've noticed. Uh, whether it's silent or not, it's genius. The reason why or the problem though is that nobody else does it. So if I want to play if I if I like oh god. Oh, what was my point again? Oh yeah, reviewers. They don't talk about the latency. But if they do talk about the latency, they refer to YouTube. And because YouTube cheats, that's not okay. You need to watch like a movie on like a movie app or something. I don't know if Netflix does it, but you need to find, literally like, I don't know, have a video play on Twitter or something or a video on your in your camera roll or Safari or, or, or Google Chrome or Safari in the inbuilt app or whatever to make sure that there is no cheating going on. Or get your damn phone. Play a fucking rhythm game. I don't know. You know what I mean? Ooh. That's a, that's a great one, honestly. Yeah. Slam some, slam some Bang Dream or... Project Sakai with some wireless headphones. And is it possible? I can do it with my AirPods because the latency is really good. I can't do it with uh, those anchors because the, la- the delay is so slight. It's slight enough where it's it's like, fuck me. Bad news bears. Bad news bears. And it's if there's like a tiny bit, it's okay because there's no way it's going to be perfect, perfect. That, the technology is not there yet. That's impossible. Right. But as small as it can be because we all know what... Too much latency feels like it's not fun, and when we hit that threshold, we can um, a lot of headphones more than you think enter that threshold. So that is just a pet peeve that I have, and unfortunately, those headphones over there follow suit. Fuck, that could be. It's a... not that bad, but it's noticeable to me. I'm yeah. also really sensitive to that, so I don't know. yeah. I mean, it it very well could be that that's an issue with wireless headphones that has yet to be like really thoroughly investigated just because i'm sure that you know they wanted it to be pretty damn close and it was pretty damn close Mm -hmm. um and so i'm sure that they were just kind of like man fuck it we'll just leave it alone for a while well that's why they have this codex like i mentioned like Mm -hmm. ldac for example where that's a certification of it's like um is all near zero latency type thing yeah right if it doesn't have that it's only bluetooth then you know there's going to be that 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 bit right so yeah i don't know that's just random pet peeve uh but i i had to get him anyways because i got a long flight to the philippines so you know got you gotta do what you gotta do so yeah that's that's been my life recently i know sorry to kind of make it about me today oh dude you're totally fine um but i it's just i'm just a lot of weird life decisions have been made so you know i'm trying to find a weird interesting balance again and i think i'm doing okay i'm definitely excited to hear how uh, your trip to the philippines goes thank you but i got to survive I, I got to do my best to survive by then finish all my edits finish everything unedit everything 
So you got it. I believe in you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, if you are also a non a non productive, non morning, and non organized person, give my tips a shot. Get a little teeny tiny, teeny tiny handheld journal or whatever, notepad, notebook, and just jot jot some notes down. Figure it out. It's not too bad. Give it a go, and you'll be you'll be surprised at at how how far just having some something written down. Just having some sort of plan. Figure out that morning routine like I did. I'll, if I was able to do it, anybody can do it, I promise. Because I was fucking lost. <laughs> I was long gone, baby. So yeah, do your best. Check the description as well. And do your best to subscribe and like the video and all that. Uh, let's, uh, this, uh, I'll bring you over to... Ooh, man. Uh, how about... Fuck. I'm trying to think of a video to bring back to Maybe just the hmm. last, just this last episode. Last episode was a good one with the, the talk about middle school. That was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you and stay safe. Do your best. 2023 is it. Let's do our best, right? Yes. Cheers to that. I don't have any more. I don't have any more coffee. Ah, cheers. Uh, uh, Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Uh, be good people, you know. <laughs>